Hi, this is Scott with Anti-Gravity Batteries. Today I will be doing an in-depth review of our anti-gravity batteries known as the small case models. These small case batteries are designed to be the most compact yet powerful lithium power sports battery you can buy. So stay tuned for that. And if you're not familiar with anti-gravity batteries, we are a company specializing in lithium ion products, including motorcycle and power sports batteries, automotive starter batteries, deep cycle batteries for RVs and off-grid uses, and we also make jump starters, power stations, and much more. Our batteries are used by world-class race teams to win championships in every facets of motorsports, as well as by daily drivers and everything in between. Here's some of what we do. So in this video, I will go over anti-gravity small case batteries and their best uses, but I will also point out the potential disadvantages of this type of battery in certain applications and things you may want to consider before going with this particular type of small case battery. I will also compare the small case batteries to our other line of batteries called the restart batteries that are the latest and most advanced lithium battery on the market. This will allow you to determine which model might be the best for your particular vehicle application. Lastly, I will go into questions about charging of lithium, and the segments for each discussion are listed below if you want to jump ahead. So let's get started. So there are only four models of the small case batteries from anti-gravity batteries. From the smallest to the largest, they are the AG401, the 801, the 1201, and the 1601. These batteries are actually the very first models that anti-gravity developed back in 2010. And they are still some of the best sellers due to their known durability and performance. They are also used by many of the top championship winning teams in Supercross, Motocross, GNCC and Works Racing, as well as AMA Road Racing in the USA. Additionally, they are used by some of the top teams in Europe, including in MXGP, World Enduro Series and World Superbike. But it's not only racers that use them, they are also used by bike builders and non-racers where an ultra compact high power battery is desired. We call these batteries the small case batteries because they have their exterior plastic case molded as small as possible around the lithium battery pack inside. These batteries are designed to be the most compact, lightest, and most powerful lithium battery available in relation to their size. And there's no other companies really doing this type of battery on the market. But because they are built in the smallest format possible, they do not have the extra features and built-in battery management protection system that our other line of batteries known as the restart batteries have. Additionally, the small case batteries are a universal fit type of battery. They are not in a standardized OEM box size. So be aware the small case batteries are a bare bones, high power, extremely compact battery that is best in specific uses such as performance vehicles. But also know that we make another battery model called the Restart line of battery that offers the OEM drop-in fitment while providing several other key benefits that are better suited to those wanting a lightweight, high power direct replacement for the typical lead acid battery. I posted a video and a link in the description below as well as maybe a card up on this side where you can check out a video on the restart models. Next, I'll go over the best uses of a small case battery and why they may not be the best choice for certain applications. The typical application for the small case battery is mainly in performance, race, or custom vehicles that don't have a lot of extra accessories that cause parasitic drains. For example, off-road bikes including motocross and enduro bikes, racing ATVs and UTVs without extra lighting or accessories, or track day and road racing bikes are great applications for the small case batteries. They are also used in many custom bike builds due to their compact size and high power. Typically, they are used for small bobbers or cafe racers made from the 1970s and that era of Japanese street bikes like the Honda CBs and Yamaha XSs. They are also good in the mid-size to larger custom V-twins where the build is just a bare minimum without a lot of extra accessories. Their small size allows the builders of custom bikes to hide the battery within the bike yet still have solid power to start these bikes. 
They are also great for kick-only older bikes that just need energy in the system during the start attempt. I also want to take a second to interject a warning here in relation to pre-1990s motorcycles and using the small case battery. If you have a motorcycle or power sports vehicle that is pre-1990s, you must make sure your charging system is operating correctly before installing a lithium or other type of battery even. The reason is, is that these pre-1990 bikes and vehicles are over 30 years old and usually have a damaged, outdated, or non-functioning voltage regulator after 30 years of use. And this can create overcharge conditions and spiking voltages going directly to the lithium battery without regulation and this may cause damage to the battery or in the extreme worst case scenario a meltdown or fire from the lithium battery being subjected to such high overcharge voltages. So it is imperative to make sure that in these types of pre-1990s vehicles that you have reviewed and updated the charging systems. It's actually quite easy and inexpensive nowadays to get a direct replacement voltage regulator that is solid state and will work perfectly fine in your vehicle and rarely fail again. But always check that voltage regulator. So the takeaway here is that it is important to have a professional check your charging system before installing any battery, but particularly in older vehicles and when using lithium batteries. So as a final word on the best use and best application for these small case batteries, they are not really intended for modern street bikes or the average daily driver type of vehicle with a lot of electronics or extra accessories. For vehicles like that, you can simply go with our restart line of lithium batteries that have a full battery management system with all the protections to prevent damage to the battery. Next, I will give a comparison on the restart battery versus the small case battery so you can make a more informed decision when comparing the two different lines of batteries we offer for motorcycles and power sports vehicles. Anti-gravity batteries offers two types of batteries for motorcycles and power sports vehicles. The small case models, which this video is about, and then our restart models. I want to go over each of them so you can best understand the differences and what their best applications are. But the bottom line is, if you're looking to go with a lithium battery, one of these options will absolutely cover your needs. The first difference between the small case and restart batteries is their sizing. The small case batteries are a universal fit type of battery and the benefits are an ultra compact format that offers very high cranking power in relationship to their size. But because they are so small, they are not a drop in replacement fit. So some modification for mounting may be necessary. On the other hand, our restart models are an OEM drop-in fit type of battery size, meaning they are the same size as the stock lead acid batteries found in all standard motorcycles and power sports vehicles. So with the restart battery, it's a drop-in OEM size replacement. And with the small case battery, you may require some modification to install. The second difference is that the terminals on the small case are a universal type of fitment and they're located on the top center of the battery, whereas the restart battery has the typical motorcycle and power sport style square terminal design. And a cool feature about the restart battery is that it has a unique four terminal design that makes an easy connection to the bike itself or for adding accessories to the other terminals. So that can be a benefit to some. The third difference is that the small case lithium batteries do not have a full battery management protection system inside the battery like the restart battery does. This means the small case battery can be accidentally over discharged or overcharged and potentially damaged if not maintained correctly. Whereas the restart battery has a full battery management protection system that would prevent over discharge of the battery as well as overcharge and other protections such as thermal protection and short circuit protection. So the small case battery can be damaged easier than the restart battery by lack of proper maintenance. So with those statements that I just made, I'm sure most people would ask why would anyone want to go with the small case battery compared to the restart version of the battery? Well, the fact is most users should go with the restart battery. It offers an easy drop-in replacement size. It has full protections from accidental damage, and it even has the restart built-in jump-starting feature, which is a fantastic benefit and won't leave you stranded. 
But on the other hand, the small case battery has some very important benefits for certain groups of riders, racers, and drivers that can make it the best choice for their application. For example, the small case batteries are exceptionally compact and in most cases have more power in a more compact format than the restart batteries or any other lithium battery on the market. For example, our small case 801 battery is the closest replacement size to our ATZ7 restart model, yet it is actually more compact and offers almost 30% more power and capacity because it does not have any circuit board or frills inside the battery. So for some riders, racers, and custom bike builders, this is a preferable option because the types of bikes that would use this small case battery would not have parasitic drains or issues that would drain the battery. So they don't need all the protective features that the restart battery has. Their objective is just to have the most power available in the smallest, lightest, most compact format available. So that is where the small case can be a benefit over the restart battery. Next, I will go over some of the specs of the small case batteries. So now I'll go over some of the general specs of these batteries. Starting with the AG401, the 401 offers 120 cranking amps, yet is only four and a quarter inches long by one and a quarter inch thick and three and three quarters inches tall. And it weighs just under a pound. It's best suited for MX or enduro bikes with up to 250 cc four stroke motors. And while it can start 450 cc dirt bikes easily, we prefer to see the 801 used in the 450s and 250 cc two stroke models due to the requirement for more cranking power. Additionally, in cold weather, you will have that extra overhead power when starting a 450 if you're using the 801. But the 401 can also be used in under 600cc road racing or track only sport bikes. The 401s are often also used on some kick only bikes like the older Japanese street bikes up to 400cc. For example, non-electric start older bikes that people are turning into bobbers or customizing because they only need a basic power supply to run the ignition. But due to the incredibly compact size and small capacity of the 401, we do not recommend it for street oriented bikes or anything with extra accessories because you would want more power and battery capacity for those roadside emergencies. Next we have the AG801. It is only four and a quarter inches long by two and a quarter inches thick and three and three quarter inches tall. It is actually the same length and height as the AG401, but is one inch deeper. This is the best seller in our small case batteries because it works for so many small to mid-sized bikes. It offers 240 cranking amps and can start up to 1300 cc four-cylinder sport bikes. And it is the go-to battery for 450 cc motocross and enduro bikes and is the choice for world-class racing teams and off-road motorcycle racing. The AG801 is also a great choice for road racing and track only bikes up to 1400 cc's. So it has tons of uses for several different applications. And finally, we have the 1201 and the 1601. They are both four and a quarter inches wide, three and a quarter inches deep, and the height of the 1201 is four and a quarter inches, while the 1601 is one inch taller at five and a quarter inches. In terms of cranking power, the 1201 has 360 cranking amps, and the 1601 has 480 cranking amps. These batteries can work in many different applications such as racing or track day batteries for four and six cylinder cars like Miatas, Civics, and others. They're also used in custom motorcycles. For example, the 1201 is often used in small custom builds up to 1200 cc's, where the 1600 works for V-twins up to roughly 96 cubic inches. But keep in mind here we are talking again about bare bones vehicles without extra accessories or parasitic drains. And next I'll go into the proper charging of a lithium battery since this is a subject that we get a lot of questions on. I want to take a moment to go over the charging of lithium batteries because we often get questions on this. First, please understand that the anti-gravity batteries will charge and work perfectly fine in all standard 12 volt charging systems found in motorcycles, power sports vehicles, and cars that use 12 volt lead acid starter batteries. 
This is because these systems are all standardized to use and correctly charge a 12 volt lead acid battery and our anti-gravity small case batteries as well as other batteries in our lineup are a direct replacement for 12 volt lead acid starter batteries. So the bottom line is these batteries will charge perfectly fine in your vehicle provided the charging system is operating correctly. Again, do not use these batteries on charging systems that have not been checked for overcharge conditions, such as those pre-1990s bikes that I mentioned. But when it comes to standalone chargers like a lead acid or lithium specific charger, that is where the differences lie. It is important to use the correct charger for your battery's chemistry. This is because these standalone chargers do not charge like a vehicle's charging system would. For example, lead acid chargers often have a desulfate mode, and this desulfate mode is intended to remove sulfate buildup that can develop inside the lead acid battery on the plates. So the lead acid charger is designed to spike voltage to remove this sulfate from the interior of the lead acid battery's plates. But a lithium battery will never sulfate because it is a completely different chemistry than lead acid. So this desulfate mode with its spiking voltage can damage or overheat a lithium battery. So it is important to avoid using a lead acid charger on a lithium battery and just use the correct charger for your battery's chemistry. This will ensure you are charging properly and keeping the battery in the best condition and remove any possibility of safety hazards or damage. So in conclusion, Anti-Gravity Batteries has developed the small case battery to fit a specific niche for those that need a battery that is ultra compact yet very high powered. So if that is what you need for your application, we have you covered absolutely. And if you would prefer the latest, most technologically advanced drop-in replacement style lithium battery for your vehicle, we also have you covered with the Restart line of batteries. So no matter what you want from your lithium battery, Anti-Gravity Batteries has an option for you. Last, if you have any questions or comments, please put them in the comments section below. Also be sure to check the related links and videos in the description section below. There's a lot of other information available on lithium batteries and we'll be doing some other educational videos. So if you got any value or education out of this video, please subscribe and click the like button and thank you for watching.